folks, we're back. Rim Shots with Sean, brought to you by Barstools and Band Talk. And hey, guys, I would be remiss if I didn't say I'm not a corporate sellout, but I am. You can't see it, but I'm sponsored by Coors Light and Molson Canadian. Uh, I have to give a shout out to them because they help me pay the bills. It's great. Um, just before the end of the last segment, Alex, we were talking about the concept of this. And uh, in your, your press release that was sent to me, um, I'm sitting there going, wow, this is an old school concept sort of thing. Explain the concept of, of, of what you're doing here. Can you repeat that or are you cut out? Sure. We're having a little bit of Zoom problems, but we're getting through it. The concept behind this this project and, and this recording, because, you know, it's it's two EPs. Um, I got the concept that was sent in your press release from the horse's mouth. What, what's the concept of this? You want to take a stab, Jordan? Uh, <laughs> I don't know the if we approached this with a concept. It was more of like kind of like let's just create something new and awesome and exciting so it was like there wasn't like a built-up concept of thinking like oh we should write these kind of songs or we should approach this music in this kind of way it kind of just was like we just got in a room together and we were like okay let's play and <laughs> that's was basically the birth of this whole entire thing so let me read something out of the press release and then i want to get your 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 Two cents on it. So it says, we are banished from our livelihood, manipulated to the guilt and shame, lied to then, now, and into per perpetuity. Pardon my expression. Uh, may we embody the vigor to thrive in this life and into the forthcoming unknown. Um, that's pretty heavy stuff. Hell yeah. Right? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, that's would, would that maybe have been, we'll call it pandemic influenced? Absolutely. So kind of what happened with these songs is, you know, we decided to name have the band name and all the songs be in latin and um with with each song as we as we wrote each song we, we chose the name and when we are done with all the songs and we are listening to the the record and looking at it we're like wow there's kind of a there's kind of a flow here there's kind of a timeline there's kind of a story and we didn't really plan for that but it just ended up sitting there right in front of our faces like so we decided to kind of write a little bit of a kind of a, a poetic uh, theme for the press release. And that's what we came up with since the first song, Exilium, which means exile. Second song, Barracundium, which means shame. The third song, Mendacium, which means lie. And the last song, Infinitum, which means infinite. So we kind of took it and ran with it, um, kind of uh, how the world's been the past couple of years. So I think most of the people reading our press release can kind of get what we're understand or get what we're trying to get across with that and um it's you know obviously left uh, open to interpretation as well when you're getting some uh very i'll call it stellar knock it out of the park uh feedback from people so uh it says the band has done it again it's like being led blindfolded through a foggy garden at midnight by chuckling is it uh, come day en route to your gallows? Give it a listen and turn it up loud. Scott Fuller, Morbid Angel. I mean, that's that's an impressive, um, you know, some people would say, hey, here's your 20 bucks for giving us that. But that's an impressive, um, you know, testament. Yeah, um, that's Scott. Uh, you cut out a little bit, but I know what you're, I have an idea what you said. So Scott is, uh, he's a buddy of mine and, um, you know, he, I sent him the the video for uh, Mendacium Immortalis and he was like, he just wrote, he just described like how he felt and he sent me this quote and I was like, damn, that's, that's pretty awesome. So yeah, thank you so much, Scott, for, yeah, uh, for you, that Scott. quote. Thank you. But um, yeah, he's a, he's an amazing uh, part of Morbid Angel and um, yeah, he's been a friend from, of mine over the years and uh, yeah, we're, we're grateful for his uh, support with that. So in, in the scene that you, you're a part of, your band's a part of, um, and Alex, when we talked on the phone there a few days ago, we had talked about uh, uh, you, you got me in the loop on, on Sin um, and, and what have you. How big is, is I guess, uh, networking and, uh, you know, getting along with your fellow folks in the scene out there in terms of building what you guys are trying to do, not only for yourself, but, but other bands as well? Uh, it's, it's a major, major part of what we do. I mean, you know the the circle of of people in LA, especially in the metal scene and music scene in general, it's it's very very it's small. So networking is very important, and um, knowing knowing the people that uh, have certain roles in the industry is very important. So yeah, Sin, um, I've known Sin for a while, and uh, he's 
in a band called Seaglow. So I've been working with him, as you know. So yeah, networking, um, it's a big deal. So Xander, talk about the scene out there. I've had a few people from, from your area on, um, and, um, you know, I'm all the way out in Halifax, Nova Scotia, which if you look at a map of Canada, go about as far east as you can go. Um, and we're right on the ocean. We're, we're kind of surrounded by water. And um, our, I guess, interpretation of your scene from, from years ago is what we would get on, you know, MTV or, you know, uh, Metal Edge magazine, those types of things. Talk about your scene and what's going on out there right now. Well, I don't know if the scene here is as intense as it was in the 80s or whatnot, but um, I think it's still a very good, strong scene, like Jordan mentioned earlier, especially now that things are coming back. Um, I think people are just more inclined to go out to a random show or actually go see their friend's band that maybe they would have said, oh, they'll come around again next time i'll get them next time but i think we're seeing more and more people like go out and support and really be involved in buying cds showing up to the shows things like that like people are really kind of coming together to help each other out and i think it's really cool especially now yeah and i mean um I guess the metal scene a lot, you know, you heard from back in the day where there was a lot of like, you know, tape sharing and, and people showing up and supporting each other's gigs versus, you know, I guess the hair metal genre where they were tearing each other's posters off and putting, you know, it, was, it kind of seemed childish. It was like, to me, a scene thrives if everybody, you know, everybody wins and everybody succeeds. There's going to be winners, there's going to be losers, people are going to be bigger and not so much, but does it make sense that if everybody gets out there and supports everybody else, the scene's just going to grow and be better? Absolutely. Like things, bands go up and down, tours go up and down, like bands change, people leave, people join, things like that. But if people still go out and support, then everyone's still going to have a great community to participate in. Um, and I don't want to leave you left out, Jordan, so I'm going to ask you this. Um, a <laughs> common right. theme with a lot of the interviews that I've been doing uh, last year or whatnot have basically um, the people that have succeeded and put things out kind of looked at the whole pandemic and said, you know what, this sucks, but we're going to do something with it. We're going to, you know, we're going to practice, we're going to write our tunes, we're going to uh, perfect our craft. We're going to use technology. We're going to do different things. We're not going to cry about it. There's nothing we can do about it. We're just going to get better. Is that what you guys did? Yeah, basically in a way that's kind of how it all happened. Basically, I mean, we didn't stop. Basically, we just continued to, you know, create songs and work on them. And then, you know, at one point it was hard because like, you know, everything was completely shut down here. So like all the businesses were closed out. Right. So you couldn't even go to like the practice room and actually practice. So that was a little bit kind of an issue. But then once everything opened, we basically just like, OK, let's go rehearse. Then we would just rehearse, create a song, go to the studio, record it, then do what we needed to do and here we are now <laughs> yeah so how do you guys approach uh, you know obviously music is always competitive we know this it's a it's a very unforgiving industry some some people make it and you go why other people don't you go why um when i i guess was you know honing my craft and learning how to play i wasn't worried about what people were doing in my neighborhood i was worried about what folks were you doing in los angeles you know what were you guys doing to improve because it didn't matter if i was good in halifax if i wasn't as good or better than the people in la um you know i was going to be dead in the water do you guys have some of that maybe friendly competition with some bands out there and do you look to some of the you know the i guess the bigger bands and say hey this is what they're doing we want to surpass it or, or elevate it pass it um I'll, I'll throw that out to you alex yeah um well you could say there's you know of course there's competition at the same time i i kind of i kind of live by the uh mindset of especially with music you know in the beginning i think a lot of people when they're first starting they they kind of set out to be in a band because they want to sound like a certain band or they're they're obsessed with a certain band and they want to do everything they can to be like them and sound like them and then you kind of get over that as you get farther along in your career and now we're just at the point where we just want to do what we love and try and do the best we can and, and push ourselves and create the music that we like and we want to hear we, we want to listen to and continue to you know push ourselves with every every facet of the industry where it's uh, whether it's the live show the production the album art the uh 
um, the press, the interviewing, the photos, everything. We're just trying to, as we learn more and more, um, push ourselves to up our game, to up our game and not really care too much about what everyone else is doing. Of course, you know, everyone is influenced by their favorite artists, but, and it's great to pay attention to what everyone else is doing, but at the same time, it, I feel like it's when you can find and you can hone in on what makes you, you and what makes you unique, then you will slowly develop um, originality and your own unique spot in the industry. Um, I started this thing, well, right, right when everything shut down, I thought truthfully it was going to be a little two week sort of fun little project. I'd be back to playing again and we all know what happened. Um, one of the things that I, I always try to do when I, when I talk to bands is, and as you guys are doing more press, you're going to get that same old question and, you know, and whatnot. And I try to avoid that. But one of the ones that I like to bring up, especially for different types of, of music and that I'm not necessarily in tune with is influences um and sometimes it's cheesy and sometimes it works out i'd like to go right across from from alex to xander to jordan who are some of your influences and i would say band and then maybe um musician okay yeah um i would say for me the the band that changed my life and started my you know it was the, the major fork in the road for me was corn i'm not i wouldn't say i'm necessarily trying to sound like that, or I'm like extremely in influenced and trying to be that sound or that image, but that is a band that influenced me the most to get me to where I am today. And uh, musician wise, that's a good one, but I'd probably say, um, I would probably say Monkey from Korn just because the specific things he did on that first record just blew my mind at the time. Xander. Oh man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> i've got influences from everywhere i know that's kind of the i like everything but uh <laughs> you know i was a little kid in the warp tour days and that influenced me a lot and then you know i started getting into more really technical stuff like animals as leaders and periphery is like a big one for me just because, you know, the songs and seeing the whole show come together was just mesmerizing to me. And even to like Rob Zombie and anything in between. Um, yeah, it's hard. It's hard not to get excited when you hear either White Zombie or Rob Zombie's tunes. I mean, they're just uh, uh, what's so they're just so energetic and so cool and just different. Mm hmm. What about you, Jordan? Uh, damn. <laughs> uh, I'm saying, as Xander, in a way, I mean, there's so many influences, and they change, like, quite a bit. Like, within a year, sometimes my influences change completely. Sure. <laughs> it goes from, like, going to, like, listening to just extreme death metal to suddenly, like, listening to, I don't know, something poppy or something like that. Like, and you're just completely blown away by it but i mean main influence wise i mean one of the bands that kind of like are like on a god tier for me is Mushuga, basically mm. you know and thomas heka is basically the the god of drumming basically for me personally so that's one band that i can say you know regardless of whatever happens influences constantly here you know change and stuff like that but that band is on a whole different tier for me personally, like the God tier and then everything else. <laughs> and, you know, and, and that's cool because I mean, every, you know, everything means something to somebody and different things mean yeah. things. And, and I, the reason why I like to ask that is because, and, and you guys kind of didn't surprise me. That's kind of what I, when I was, but every now and again, like when I interviewed sin, he's like, my favorite band's kiss. And I'm like, Whoa, that's kind of cool. Cause my favorite band was kiss too. Right. Um, and, and I get that. Um, and it's, it's you know there's so much out there now it's it's hard to listen to it all but you know i ask that too because as i'm listening to your material i'm trying to figure out where it's coming from and <laughs> i'm not figuring it out so thank you for that oh, yeah, thank that's, you that's the goal <laughs> that's the right. goal we're just so, yeah, we're, we're good friends basically that just you know 
love music, love creating stuff. So that's why all this stuff just comes out so naturally and so easily. That's why, you know, like some of the things that you said, like the music necessarily, when you put it on, first aspect is like, oh, this is a little too much. But if you actually just sit there and listen, you actually get like, whoa, this is going somewhere. There is a story here. That's why I also like the whole not having a singer thing is also cool is because the music tells the story, you know, whether it's the strings, whether it's the guitars, whether it's the bass, whether it's the drums, something's happening. So it's like, you know, it just flows. <laughs> well, and like I All say, right. I, you know, Raquel sends me this and I'm like, OK, whoa, this is this is neat. And I had to listen to it a few times. And to your point, I was kind of every time I listened to it, I was getting something different out of it. Um, I can never be accused of having a huge attention span, full disclosure. Um, <laughs> I do have to focus, but it, it was cool. I could appreciate the playing, no question. Um, because as a musician myself, you know, I'm listening to certain things and I know what goes into that, right? It's not just say, hey, we'll just plug it in and see where it goes. I know there's a lot of work behind it. Um, but then to take that into a studio and you guys would all know this too, you think something's just absolutely cooking and then you record it once or twice and you go like, Oh, I didn't think that's what it was. Did you have any moments like that where you maybe had to shake things up and change it a little bit because what you thought it sounded like wasn't what it sounded like? Um, Jordan, anything? Uh, I don't, me personally, I didn't feel that kind of moment at all, except uh, I think the last song, Infinitum, was the only one that was kind of, because it was actually more done by Alex. I mean, we had our input, but about shit and i'll say 95 percent of it was all alex basically so that was the only one that was kind of like okay here is a song that was like i love it let's do it so it was a little bit more of like there was more of like a surprise aspect yeah, yeah. the other three songs were just totally different because it was like we created them in a room together from scratch from nothing it was basically like hey play a riff okay let's jam on this one ah, i don't like where this is going so it was more like you know, built up. So we knew exactly what it's going to sound like. You're, you're going to have to tell me how you pull that off there, brother. Cause sometimes I'll go in the studio and I'll go, you know what? That's exactly what I thought it sounded like. And then other times I'm <laughs> like, that sounds like a set of drums being thrown down a flight of stairs. You know what I mean? And you got to change <laughs> things up. And um, so, and then when you're in the studio too, especially if you're on the clock, like I'm guessing you guys probably run your own show and what have you, but if you're paying people, you want to be on, you want, you don't want to waste time. Time is money when you're, you know, you're paying for X amount an hour. Right. So you yeah. want to be prepared. Is that, uh, is that what you guys did before you went in? Yeah. Yeah. And I have to say too, another reason why, um, we know what we're getting into when we go into the studio is because, you know, I'm really big on um, having a very, very, very articulate guitar tone and same with bass. And there's a lot of bands that they kind of, they get a little excited with the amount of gain and distortion they use. So when they're jamming in the rehearsal, things are sounding good because, you know, you can't really hear the details and the articulations and the feel and the uh the the characteristics of the guitar as much because it's kind of hidden so i'm very like i like a lot of mids in my guitar tone and i like it to be very in your face and very very present so that's the way we rehearse and when we go into the studio there are no surprises because we know exactly how things sound uh from rehearsing and that's just how i like to work i don't like any surprises so we make sure everything's all, all on the table uh ahead of time so you know as we wrap because zoom's giving me the ticker here i actually paid for the full meal deal but to, for whatever reason they're putting a clock on me so i want to make sure that the people that watch this i know where to find you guys uh even more so now uh where are my viewers going to find your material and check you guys out and get your tunes and all that good stuff <laughs> okay. everything is on all of your favorite platforms spotify title apple music youtube if they don't ban us again um <laughs> i'm forgetting some we have digipacks so you can get from our website um what's our website swordsadominum.com which would be s-o-r-d-e-s-d-o-m-i-n-u-m because I know that's maybe confusing to find, but that's also the same spelling for Instagram, Facebook, anything that we have out there is under that name. 
Kids, I'm finally glad we got to do this. You know what? And I do apologize for the hiccup, but uh, we were tenacious and we got her done. Thank you so much. Uh, what I'd like to do is probably check in with you guys in a few months to see what's up and see how it's going. Find out about that Salt Lake show. That sounds great. Um, and thanks a lot for doing this. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for having, Thank us. You for having us. Thank you. Peace, guys. Later. Bye-bye.